what we want now is a symbolic way of stating the question, find all antiderivatives of f. So we don't want to have to keep writing that out over and over again. We want a notation that's just going to indicate what we want is to find an expression for that family of functions that represents all of our antiderivatives. And that symbol is going to be this sort of elongated S shape. <clears throat> and we would read that as integrate So we would want to integrate f of x dx, where this dx means essentially the same thing it did with our derivatives. It means with respect to x. So basically, x is our independent variable. Um, whatever we're integrating, we're considering x to be that variable. So we want to integrate some function f of x dx means the same thing as find all antiderivatives of f. So that elongated s symbol is referred to as the integral sign. And again, this problem is asking us to find the indefinite integral of some function f or Another way to say that exact same thing is find that family of antiderivatives. So the following formulas are all going to be helpful in evaluating these indefinite integrals. And each of these formulas are going to come back to that idea of essentially working a derivative backwards. What function would we have to start off with that if we took its derivative, we would get x to the nth power? So we can write the integral, the indefinite integral of x to the nth power as x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus some constant c. And that will always be true, except in the case where n equals negative 1. And we'll take a look at that case in just a second. So as long as n is not equal to negative 1, we can integrate this function by increasing the exponent by 1 and dividing by that exact same value. So we can check each of these to show that they're true. If we take the derivative of x to the n plus 1 power divided by n plus 1 plus some constant c, so our rules for derivatives with power function says n plus 1 is going to come down as a factor in front. So we'll get n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1, and then we reduce that original exponent by 1 over n plus 1. So this is, again, that same idea. If we had x cubed, this would become 3x, and then reducing that original exponent by 1, that would become x squared the n plus 1 we already had, and then plus c becomes 0. So n plus 1 over n plus 1 is going to cancel. 1 minus 1 is going to cancel, leaving us with x to the n. So to integrate a power function, increase the exponent by 1, divide by that exact same amount, and then we add that constant plus c. The integral of e to the x dx will just be e to the x plus some constant c. And again, we can verify this by taking the derivative of this expression. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The derivative of c is 0. So we've returned back to that function we were starting off with. The derivative, or I'm sorry, the integral of 1 over x is going to be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus some constant c. So what we can note here is that the integral of 1 over x dx is the exact same thing as the integral of x to the negative 1 dx, 
which is why in this first property we had this rule that this formula only applies whenever n is equal to something besides negative 1. When we have n equals negative 1 for our power function, that's the same thing as 1 over x. So we have this different rule. And we can demonstrate again that that's true. The derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x plus some constant c is going to be exactly the same thing as the derivative of the natural log of x plus c. We're not really going to go into a lot of detail as to why these two things are exactly the same, uh, but it turns out that they are. And then the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative c is 0. So if we start off with the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, we get 1 over x, which is what we started off with here. So again, in each of these cases, we're really just thinking through the derivative property backwards. What function would we have to differentiate to get this result? The only real trick here is for the natural log function, we have those absolute value bars around x, which we haven't seen before. But when we integrate, we do need those as part of our answer. And we also have a couple of properties for indefinite integrals that we can introduce. If we're integrating some function being multiplied by some constant k, we can set that constant aside and just take the integral of the function itself. So for instance, if we had the integral of 3x dx, we could bring this 3 out in front. So that all we're doing is integrating x, where x is just some power function, in this case, x to the first power, even though we don't write it. So this integral would be 3 times x to the increasing that exponent by 1, and then dividing by that exact same value, plus some constant c or 3x squared over 2 plus c. So we don't always need to take this intermediate step of pulling that constant outside the integral, but it can help to give you a clearer picture of what that result should be. If we have two functions being added or subtracted from each other, which we want to integrate, that's also going to be the same thing as the integral of f of x dx, and then plus or minus whatever that original operator was, the integral of g of x dx. So essentially, we can integrate functions term by term. So if we had the integral of 4x plus e to the x dx, that would be the same thing as integrating just this first function and then integrating that second function. So our first function is some constant multiple times x. So that would just be 4 times the integral of x dx plus the integral of e to the x dx, which will give us 4 times x squared over 2, since we're increasing that exponent by 1, dividing by the exact same value plus e to the x, and then again, plus some constant c. So in this case, 4 over 2 will simplify to 2x squared plus e to the x plus c. Now, what's very important at this stage is to keep in mind that this works when we're adding and subtracting two functions. But if we have the product of two functions, and we're trying to integrate that, it's very important to keep in mind that that is never equal to just the integral of the first function times the integral of the second. So we can take that integral and split it up across the sum and difference of different pieces of our function, but we can't split it up through multiplication. So that is never, ever going to be true. Um, so for more complicated functions, we'll encounter those in module 11. We'll have to introduce some different tactics for those. So 
constant multiples, addition, subtraction, relatively easy to deal with. But when we get into the product of two functions, we're going to have to introduce some more complex techniques to get those results.